Hello and welcome. My name is Svetlana Stone. You are watching and listening Artist Voices, where we believe it's essential for artist voices to be heard. And we are pleased to have Pablo Valadares here tonight to talk about what does it take to be a musician in the 21st century. And Pablo, I'm very happy to have you here at Public Media Network. How was your day? It's been great so far. I just want to thank you for the invitation and actually congratulate you for this wonderful project that you run in the city of Kalamazoo that I'm sure it benefits everyone, artists and the community. Thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. And um, of course, yeah, we want to uh, hear artist voices and this is the reason why um, we invited you so we can more share about um, what does it take to be a musician. Mm -hmm. So can you tell our viewers uh, about yourself and how you uh, get to Kalamazoo? Well, I'm from Ecuador, so it's been a long journey so far. <laughs> uh, I moved to the United States in 2014 and I actually went first to Des Moines, Iowa, where I got my um, undergrad in music, piano performance uh, at Drake University. Um, I studied there with, with Dr. Nicholas Roth, who is actually a good friend from Lori Sims, the piano professor at Western Michigan University. Um, and I got to know Lori when she actually performed in one of the serious concerts that my teacher has at, at Drake University. And um, the one thing that I was very surprised is and with all due respects to all my my female pianists, it's is is al is always being more challenging for women in this industry, you know, to become successful, and and that is something that I I really admire from my teacher Lori Sims because even from the first time I heard her play, she was so determined, she was going for the con for for the music. Um, and that's what really struck me a lot. So the first time I heard her play, I was like, I want to study with her. I want to learn how to be that determined, how to have a strong performance and, and, and listen to the music in a different ways. So um, after that, I was applying to other universities, but Western was, also, was, of course, in the back of my mind. And I applied, and thank God I was able to get here. So I came in 2018, got my master's degree in piano performance as well. Um, and then I became an adjunct professor at Western for the past year. Mm -hmm. So um, you've been at Western since 2018, yes. correct? Yeah. So and you also did a uh, teaching uh, job, you uh, teach students. Mm -hmm. um, so working with students, uh, uh, what do you think um, they are challenging uh, with what with. they're facing with, you know, to be a student. Right. Of course, you can also speak uh, of yourself. You have already two degrees that you graduate with. So I think, well, I started as a grad assistant, actually, when I moved in uh, to, to Kalamazoo. And it was interesting because I was pursuing my master's degree and I was teaching uh, students that were, you know, some of them were almost my age. So I could relate to most of the, their struggles. And of course, the pandemic happened, which is maybe another topic that we can talk about later. But um, I think one of the, the biggest struggles for any student is to take classes that m might not be so beneficial later. you know. <laughs> and that's what, of what I learned, especially in my class. I, I taught piano lab. Um, so in, 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 in this class, which is piano related, and all the musicians, you, you know, as a musician, all the musicians have to learn how to play piano. It's like the basic instrument or the guitar, right? Um, but not all, not, not all the students want to play piano. <laughs> so there's the challenge. You know, I sat down with them and, be, and I, was, I was honest. I was, well, if you don't pass this class, then you cannot graduate, you know? Uh, so I think the challenge from the teacher point of view is, um, to make the students love the class in a way, you know, and, and have the students prepare for the class and not see, not only see it as, I have to do this because I have to pass the class. Of course, we've all been there, right? Uh, me as, an, uh, as a student as well. I know part of, our, of, of my job is, um, as a musician is, you know, to research, to find new music, to play other music. 
but I'm not always willing to research and sit down and read a bunch of books and all that stuff, you know? Uh, so I think I, I know that struggle when you, you really have to go to college and do something because you have to rather than because you really want to. Um, so I think we can connect in that way with like all of us, you know. <laughs> so speaking about love and music, uh, you mentioned some of the students, uh, you know, they must take classes. But for you, you are a successful musician and very talented. How you fall in love with music or who influenced you? So you, um, you know, I, um, I, I'm reading this book that is called Talent is Overrated. And I was reading, there's a chapter that talk about uh, why Mozart and not even only Mozart, um, I'm blinking on the name of this famous, uh, uh, yeah, Tiger Woods became so famous and everything. And they related to how the, the beginning of all of it started, right? And then put me, I, I started thinking about my situation and they say that, um, for instance, Mozart, his dad was, he was an educator. So for, for, for um, Mozart's dad to educate was like, was his core. He knew how to do it. He knew what to do. So he, he started with Mozart at the age of three, right? And, 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 and eventually Mozart grew up into this amazing musician, but he, his, his training was so deep in him that by the time he was five or eight is something that probably he was doing five years already. Of course, there's a lot of controversy whether it's talent or not. But the, my point here is that Mozart uh, saw his dad doing it for so long. And when I started thinking about that, my dad is a musician too. Um, oh, your dad is a musician yeah, too? Yeah, my dad is a musician. So, and my mom is a choir director. Wow. So I literally grew up in the same situation. I remember I would go to, um, to the operas. I would, my dad would be playing on stage with, uh, he's a lot, of, he does a lot of salsa. What instrument he is playing? Well, he is, I always say is he's way better than me because he plays everything and he composes. He plays counter bass, but he's uh, self-taught in piano. So he plays jazz and salsa. He's a great salsa player um, and he composes. So um, in the in the in the pre in the last concert, uh, I know you were there, and and I played some of his, his compositions music. and arrangements as well. Wow. Um, so yeah, I grew up like that, and I I remember I, I wanted to be I wanted to do that. So I remember he had a piano at home, and every time before I go to high school, I would you know try to do something. And then my dad said, "Well, you're going to be a pianist," and that's how it. <laughs> so it, it you all have no started. other choices, right? Yeah, yeah, no choice actually. <laughs> no choice. <laughs> And, and yeah, and same thing with Tiger Woods. Uh, in, in the book, they say, the, the author says that he, uh, the dad would play and he would just sit Tiger in front of, of him, just watching him play, you know, just watching the technique and everything. So I think it has, a, I, I relate it a lot. Not that I'm Mozart or anything. I mean, they're genius, right? But just the fact of sitting your, your child uh, and looking at something, you know, you can just invest that time in. I think that kind of started, that, that, that's how it happened with me, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> so were your parents happy when you decided? Well, it was challenging. When I was 18, I graduated from the German high school in Quito. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So don't ask me to speak German because it's been eight years. Were you at Germany or was it school in, in your country? It was, no, it was in my country. In your country. But it's, the, the German community in Ecuador for some reason is, well, not for some reason, actually, it makes sense. It's because of the war, right? Um, it's pretty big. And so they, and, and I, it, it, the, the high school has a hundred, is a hundred years old. So they started at, at a hundred years old, a uh, hundred years ago. But anyway, yeah, so I went to German school and I actually finished, uh, my diploma is, I could go in, and go and study economy or any, any of those related degrees, you know, like um, if I wanted to study mathematics or physics. So I got that diploma and I'm actually really big into numbers. I love numbers and I love economy and all that stuff. So for one second, for like two weeks, when I, after I graduated, I told my dad, you know what, I'm, I'm done with music. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was not happy because of course he had invested time and money and you know, 12 years of lessons or even more. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I took the decision to go with music but also in the back of my mind, you know, I, I, there was that what if, if I had gone the other way. But I think pretty much all of us have that kind of pattern. Yeah, you know? so, yeah, yeah, those thoughts. Yeah. But yeah, so, and after that, I'm actually very happy uh, how it turned out. I know the, 
the musician life is, is way different and it's more challenging. And I can even, it's, it's easy to compare, especially when, for instance, I grew up with, uh, I went to college with my friends and I, I actually didn't have many musicians, music friends. I was always in, involved with business majors and uh, pharmacy. So right now my friends, you know, they're working in big companies and, and I think they have the nine to five job and it, it's just a way different um, life. And I think in that way, musicians, we just have to be more creative and, and just be more calm and wait for, to get success eventually rather than just going for it. Mm -hmm. And, and we all know that um, people who are not in music, they really like musicians and they think that you were born like with the piano, mm -hmm. so you just can't play. But, um, and they think that they like, mm, like musicians, life is easy, but uh, the people, uh, the musician, we know as a musician that that's not uh, that way. Yeah. And what, um, why is that? Um, why do you think, what, what, why is it? Uh, being a musician, it's uh, not easy. Um, I think it has a lot to do, well. I mean. Yeah, no, I, I know. Um, the, uh, the struggle comes also to whether you understand who you are. It, it has a lot, the, uh, the artist has a lot to do with connecting to yourself as, as, a, as a human being is, is kind of figuring out who you are and then portraying that art to the world, right? Um, and So it's not only technical part, right? right that people think, so you learn the song, you can play, but first you need to realize who you are, exactly. what you try to say. Exactly. And I learned that the hard, I mean, kind of the hard way because I, I've been a classical player since I was five. I mean, since I started, you know? And then my dad is actually the one that he's pushing me. He's like, no, you have to come back to your roots. You have to play, you're Latino. You have to play music from South America. You have to, you have to learn how to play salsa, how to play Cuban music. And, and he's, the only, he's the one, you know, bringing me back. And for years I was like, no, I'm a classical piano player. Why would I do that? This is not my duty. And then I learned that, no, I mean, really the, the, the musician who, who understands, uh, the background or the roots or where they come from, that's actually the musician that can have success. I'm not talking about fame, but actually to connect with, with the art that, that, that the musician is doing, you know? Um, and that's, <laughs> that, that, then it becomes interesting because you have, I mean, all the, co there's so many colleges in the world. There's so many pianists, there's so many singers, so many, right? But then later you start seeing, or at least I've started seeing like, I know there are great musicians, for instance, at Western, but not all of them work in their art um, and why as do you they think? should be. Yeah. You know, I know you're a, a beautiful singer, and I know you you work on your music and you record and you do like that's different, you know, than just practicing in a in a room for eight hours. But it just stays there, you know. So that's the difference. You can you can I think uh, skills is just one part. The other, the other part, and that's something I always say the, the young generation is, you have to know how to act, how to talk, you know, networking. Uh, of course, your skills have to be there, but being, being an artist is not just playing. It ha there's a lot more to do. Do you think the music that when, uh, when you were at school, was that enough, like classes that the music school can offer? I'm talking about any school the teacher, maybe they should add something else, other classes that require to be uh, successful musicians. Maybe it just, it's not enough, just play the instrument or yeah. know the music yeah. theory, you know? Well, I think it has a lot to do with how technology and, uh, you know, the 21st yes, century has exactly. developed. And I, I know this one artist that actually, he's a, uh, he came to the Gilmore, uh, two years ago, her name is Tiffany Poon, and why I'm talking about her is because she <laughs> she has gained so much social media uh, followers and, and just attention and everything that she's right now she's I think she, if I'm not wrong I hope not I think she's from South Korea, uh, but I do know that in the country that or in the Asian countries they're taking Tiffany as uh, an example and they're taking her way of portraying her music and her talent. She's a classical pianist. 
um, they're analyzing her and putting there uh, as a as a college uh, class, you know. So in a way, I think it's shift. It's starting to shift, and they're starting to realize that not only developing the skills and knowing history and theory is is the thing, but um, knowing how to market yourself as an artist, right? And I think colleges, and I I don't want to say names either yeah yeah we just talk in general yeah right? like in general there's some colleges i know they they actually help a little bit with, more with that um but it, you know it also you're battling with the idea of western classical western ideology and music where everything has to be pure you know you have to know how to play rachmaninoff and list and beethoven which yes you have to but now it's uh, it's I think it's about being different rather than just following the same line. Like Sergio Tiempo, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm saying names, but I admire Sergio Tiempo so much. He's a, an amazing pianist. He played the Chopin Sonata Number no. Three, and then he shifted completely to play a Joropova, in, uh, which is from Venezuela in, in Piazzolla. You know, that to me it was the best concert. That, that was awesome. <laughs> and I'm so glad that the Gilmore, you know, bring uh, a lot of great world-class musicians. And you also, like, uh, stay connected. And you also, like, kind of, like, um, work um, with all those uh, musicians. And when you see them and, and uh, their performances, and, like, it was, um, like, uh, in April, right? In April, mm -hmm. it was a Gilmore Festival. So, and I saw you were uh, with them. So, what do you think, like, um, be next to the world class musicians? So, what kind of thoughts come to your head? Well, it's interesting because uh, people think that classical music is that, and that's not true. I'm actually, I was researching this past week because, of course, to market yourself as an artist, you have to know your audience. And I was researching about classical music in the world and everything. And I was reading this that um, 30, I believe it's 39% of the listeners are 60 years old or plus, right? But the rest, um, there's a lot actually of, there's a lot of youth that, that use classical music to, <laughs> to concentrate, which is interesting, or to fall asleep, uh, or just to relax. But in a way, even whatever way they're using it, they're still consuming classical music. Um, and in relation to the Gilmore, they brought a lot of young artists, and they're amazing. Uh, actually, the the Bang Clyburn uh, winner this year, he's 18 years old and is from wow. South Korea, you know. Wow. And so that just, it, it just um, shows me that Classical music is not that, and, and, and not because it shouldn't be, but because even though, you know, people always say, oh, he's playing Chopin or, and whatnot, that, those are masters, masterpieces, right? And we can't deny where, where the music comes from. Um, and everything has come from, you know, from Bach all the way from the Baroque, from the Renaissance. So we can't deny the history in that way. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
welcome back uh, for those of you who just tuned in. We are here at Public Media Network with uh, Pablo Valadares to talk about what does it take to be a musician in the 21st uh, century. And thank you for watching us. So, Pablo, uh, you uh, mentioned earlier about um, coming back to roots, that your dad was trying to bring your attention, that classical is good, but uh, you have to remember where you came from. And um, why do you think is important? And I know I've been attending one of your concerts when you just recently did um, that was dedicated to Latin music. Mm -hmm. So what you were thinking when you were playing this concert? Like, uh, did you remember what uh, your dad told you or did you talk to him? How, how was those feelings to bring, to introduce to the audience um, your roots? and be part of that? Well, I think the, the story actually goes back to uh, when I was trying to accept that part of me was also playing that music, you know? Uh, and also there's this thought of Western music is the ultimate, right? So if you don't play, if you play something that is not Western music, then then that's not it, <laughs> you know? And a few years ago, I started playing one of the pieces that I, I performed that night, which is Caribe by Michelle Camillo, which, which is more like a jazz Latin music, uh, song, actually. Uh, and I remember when I was practicing it, I, I started feeling, you know, a little bit like weird, you know, like, what am I playing? What am I practicing? Everyone is playing Chopin and, Be and Beethoven. I just felt, I didn't feel comfortable at the beginning. But I think it has to do a lot, a lot to do with uh, with the identity, which was to connect big, to yourself exactly to connect myself, and I was telling my teacher, you know, I was I was like, I don't feel comfortable playing it right now, wow. and I don't feel comfortable like we had studio class, and then I was playing it, but after that, uh, someone would play Schubert, <laughs> you know, so I was like, what am I doing? But yeah, so when I started to connect with that part of myself, um, it actually became easier, and in, in, in it became easier to say to people, this is who I am. I'm not only a classical pianist, but I can also play Latin music. And there's a lot of classical, uh, classical, you know, composers in Latin America, like, you know, Piazzolla, Ginastera, they, they, they wrote academic music. So it was challenging at the beginning, just to break the wall, you know. Um, the concert, I thought it was, it was great, um, ma mainly because I, I had a lot of support from Western, you know, to bring such a different program. And I think, um, you know, the School of Music is at least trying to put on stage different cultures and, and give the opportunity for the minorities. So that's kind of the message that I got, and I actually appreciate that a lot from them. Um, the concert, I had a great time. You know, I actually enjoyed it quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was great so, concert. I've been there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Great Sublana. concert. And, and it was, yeah, I felt comfortable. Daniela, she's a great singer. I love her. I love her um, her attitude. I, I love her vibe, her energy. And so she brings a lot of that to stage. So working with her, it's very easy. And, and we put a, a really beautiful program together. And um, the audience seemed to like it. So I was very happy with it. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, yeah, I... I understand. Yeah, it was it was great, Lynn, and I'm glad that you're doing trying to bring and introduce even you know Kalamazoo audience to your music, and student at Western. That's mm -hmm. great, like you said, uh, and um, feel comfortable about yourself, who you are. It's important it's because sometimes you know uh, many people like hesitate to um, you know reveal who they are, what country they're from, for many reasons, you know. But uh, yeah. the uniqueness. I think it should be always in us, mm -hmm. and we should always mm -hmm. remember, like your dad told our roots, yeah. where we came yeah. from. So that's great. And what, um, so being in music uh, for so long, go through all those challenges, what would uh, you, what a piece of advice you gonna give to the young um, musicians mm -hmm. or any musician? who decided to be musicians yeah. or already in music? I think uh, from the young musicians that I, I've been in contact with, um, it's easier for anyone who's young to want everything to happen right away. 
and I think it's not only it's part of being young, right? <laughs> we uh, being young, you just want you you think if you practice enough, then you'll become a star next day, next week, you know. <laughs> and it, it doesn't just happen like that. It has a lot to do with uh, being more mature, with experience, with with actually. And I'm sorry to say this, but really screwing up a lot. Right? I mean, going on stage and have a bad concert and then go back and have another one and try just again and again and again. Um, and it's, I, I've, been, I've been listening also to this criticism saying that, well, the 21st century is, or all the technology that has been happening lately uh, has, become, has become, or make, uh, you know, humans to be less concentrated and less focused because you can just, you know, with this, you can Get, just yeah, very quickly. find everything, right? Yep. So you don't really need to hard, to work that hard anymore, right? But, um, and music at least is one of those things, you cannot hide it. I mean, if you don't practice, that you, you won't perform well. And, and it's so much in your face, right? It's, it's very, um, it's very harsh, right? And, and artists, we all, we feel it right away. And I think uh, youth and, and, well, myself, I've learned to stick with it. Like, okay, we had a bad performance. Let's go back to, let's go back to work. There's no time, maybe to be sad for 10 minutes. Let's go back to work, right? Um, and that has a lot to do with the attitude that I expect young artists to have. Uh, I've been talking to some friends about that and, and things take time. You know, one time my, my teacher, told me i was asking my teacher like why i cannot do this like what i need to know how i can fix it right away and she just said you know sometimes it's just time sometimes it's just experience sometimes it's just playing uh, 10 more years you know and and i didn't understand at the moment but now i, I quite do uh, a lot has to be with just uh, maybe just living more and being older mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say to to young generations like take it easy. I mean, not and not everything has to happen right away. Mm -hmm. Consistence and practice. Yeah, yeah. And no. also reading, like you said about uh, other musicians, you know, like would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Like you can be inspired. Oh yeah. To yeah. And that that's why uh, Princess the Gilmore is such an amazing thing. Uh, thank God I, I I had the chance to work for them uh, this past two years. Um, I was able to turn page for mm, a few, three of, of the artists that came. Um, and um, yeah, for the Masons concert, I was able to turn pages for the pianist. And she's like my age, but she's a well-renowned, you know, pianist. And just having that opportunity to be like, wow, you're almost my age, but you're this famous, you know? It's not about comparison, but it's about uh, you get motivated, and I think uh, the Gilmore in that aspect, uh, having such an amazing festival in the city of Kalamazoo, it brings a lot of culture and, and opportunities for young generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm sure that a lot of people appreciate what they're doing for the community. Yeah. And also, like, for people who don't know much about music, turning pages, it's not just turning pages. <laughs> you have to know the music. Can yeah, you, you know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah. they would think, oh, what's yeah. that big deal to turning pages? Actually, you have to have a really great... Uh, reading skills, understand the music. Yeah, no, it was I, for, It uh, is challenging, for, that's why. <laughs> for Igor Levitt's concert, <laughs> he played this piece, which is by Busoni. Busoni is never easy. But he played, uh, it's called the uh, Counterpuntistic Fantasy. That was my first time. I've never felt so scared to turn pages because the piece itself is really challenging to play. Um, and you know, you can get lost. And at some point, uh, it was challenging, but it was fun. Being next to Igor Levitt on stage, he brought so much energy to, to, the, to the hall. It was, I was getting like his energy and I was building up, you know, <laughs> and I was just sitting next to him. So that was, it, it was pretty cool, yeah, to have those opportunities. So I know that um, are you gonna go to your uh, next journey? You're gonna leave Kalamazoo? but uh, I'm sure we'll stay connected. Yeah. So tell, tell us about like, um, maybe what, what, what are you trying to achieve through your music, mm -hmm. through your art? What, what are you gonna try to tell to the world? Mm -hmm. And if, what would be the message, you know, like? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to create this profile that where where I show the world you know a, a side of 
myself, which is definitely connected to the Latin mu community in Latin music. So uh, my goal as of, you know, a few years is to learn more music from, from South America. Yeah. Uh, but also combine it with classical works. Um, I actually, s I had the chance to go and study my doctoral studies um, in, in Arizona, but I decided to not go there and instead um, go to this diploma in performance in Roosevelt and University in Chicago, just so that I can have more time to build this idea that I have before I take the doctorate program and really expand it. Um, I think um, I'm gonna continue with the classical world, of course, um, because we have to be able to do everything pretty much. I think a, a well-rounded artist has to be able to play not everything, but you know, like the, the, the important works and, and, and all those things. But yeah, so my plan for the next two years is to be in Chicago, uh, experience a lot of the community. I know there's a lot more diversity in, in, in the city. So it's gonna be easier to connect with, com uh, with Latino communities. Uh, there's an Ecuadorian community, <laughs> something that is, there's no here in Kalamazoo, so I'm excited for that too. Um, so yeah, just keep working on, on my repertoire and hopefully things will work out. And how uh, community, all um, your friends or audience can support um, you as a musician, you know, or any musician, you know, how the community, what they can do for the musicians, that musicians feel that we are not left behind, that we are supported and appreciated. So um, what do you mm -hmm. think the community should done? We know there's a lot of things done, but what may be something? Well, the artists took a big hit during the pandemic, and that was very not noticeable, right? Uh, and I think <laughs> it was, I'm never gonna say the pandemic was a good thing at all, but if anything, it showed that uh, the world needs art, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's I, pretty, I agree. <laughs> right? And because people started to, you know, the the the, uh, the online concerts were um, they were so necessary. I mean, people were looking for them, and um, so if anything, yeah, everyone understood that without art, we're just nothing. I mean, there's nothing that that moves us. There's nothing that we're looking forward to. Connections. And music is, is um, it creates the connection between the art of, you know, the, the art that was created and the audience. So um, if anything, I believe the community uh, already understood the message, right? And it's not only supporting, isn't, I wouldn't call it like support the artists, but really support their, their connection to, to what's there that moves you as a person, right? Watching a movie, going to a concert, uh, uh, so, you know, we artists, we're, we're not always seen as the most important thing. And I think it was a, it was a good time for, for, for the people, for the community to notice that it's actually very important in everyone's lives. Um, so yeah, I hope that they, they I, I hope that the audience keeps coming to concerts, keeps supporting the artists. Um, and also be open to listen to different music, you know, that's, that's, I think that's very important. Just, just be open to listen. Whether you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to like it. But exactly, we are all different. Open. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. You have your own tastes and it's like, I like burger, you like salad, you know, same exactly, thing. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I'm open to listen or to, to eat, you know, different kind of food, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is any, any, anything else uh, you would like to tell something maybe you want to tell about we missed? then this is the time you can... What should I say? Uh, well, yeah, no, I, I just want to um, acknowledge the Kalamazoo as a, as a nice city. You know, it, I didn't, when I got here, I didn't think it was that big, but the more I stayed, I learned that there's a lot going on. That's like true. Pfizer. <laughs> <You know>? Exactly. <laughs> when I learned about the vaccines, I was like, what is going on? We're, we're in the here, city right? yeah. <laughs> of the vaccines? Uh, so that's one thing. The Kalamazoo always surprised me. The more I stayed, and there's uh, the people here is is wonderful. And now that I'm moving to Chicago, I'm gonna miss you know being able to take the car and be somewhere in five minutes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Western and you know the other colleges, I think uh, 
there's a lot of hidden gem, germs that you know they um, that people need to explore. Kalamazoo College is beautiful. That was the, the first time I was there was in, two months ago, and I was like, wow, this is great. The Steps and Chapel is beautiful. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna miss being here, and, and I just think the Western, um, well, I'm a Western student, that's why I'm talking so much about it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it's a great community too. But I hope you will be able to learn, uh, you know, more Latin music and bring here, you know, to Western so we can listen. Yeah, um, th I think there, there might be a concert in September that I'm going to oh, come back. Yeah. yeah, speak about the concert. Uh, how our audience can find information about you and your future performances? On my social media. Okay, what is that? <laughs> I'm working on my Facebook. I'm um, sorry, on my website. Um, mm -hmm. Social media Instagram is underscore Pablo Valladares my name and then facebook is pablo esteban valladares it's my second name <laughs> that isn't the <laughs> i should probably erase it yeah but you can you can find about concerts there and eventually i'll have my web page which is www.pablo slash valladares.com Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for being with us today. And uh, I really enjoyed to learn about you, about your music, about your experience. Thank you so much. I appreciate, appreciate that you bring your voice and people can hear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Svetlana. I had a wonderful time. Thank you. Thanks. Well, this concludes this episode of Artist Voices, where we believe it's essential for artist voices to be heard. And we are so thankful to uh, Pablo Valadares uh, for his time and for sharing his uh, music with us. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.